All right, everybody, welcome back. Today's talk is a good one. It says here that this is part one. I think the slideshow is two parts. The video might be maybe three or four parts. We'll see. Uh, so we're going to talk today about spherical coordinates. These are coordinates for space that we may not know about. So let's let P be a point in space, and let's say its rectangular coordinates are x, y, and z. And let's let M denote the uh, line that joins P to the origin in space. And maybe to make matters a little bit simpler or to bring some kind of more information into the mix here, let's project P to the xy plane. Let's say there's some point, maybe if, if P, let's say, lives above the xy plane, there's some point underneath P right in the xy plane. We'll call that one Q. So its coordinates are the same x and y coordinate as P, but then z will be zero. So we'll let Q be that projection of P to the xy plane, and we'll also let L denote the line segment that joins Q to the origin. So that's going to be the same like the line segment that we saw that we called L when we met uh, polar coordinates for the xy plane. So then with this bit of information uh, as our kind of setup, we'll define spherical coordinates for this point P. Those spherical coordinates come in the form of uh, three Greek letters. Rho, theta, and phi. So this one's rho, that's theta, and that one is phi. Um, okay, so then what are the, going to be the meanings of these uh, coordinates rho, theta, and phi? Well, rho will be the length of m, so that is the distance from p to the origin. Remember, m is this line segment here that joins p to the origin. Its length is rho. Think of it as like a radius in space, right? So it kind of plays the analogous role that R did in polar coordinates. So rho is this radius in space, this length from the origin to P. And now theta will be the angle between L and the positive x-axis. Well, L is the line segment joining the origin to Q. And so theta actually plays the exact same role that it played in polar coordinates. It is the angle between the positive x-axis and the ray that now joins the origin to this projection of P to the xy plane. And then last but not least, phi, this angle is the one between M and the positive z-axis. So M, remember, is the line segment joining the origin to P, the point that we care about, and uh, the angle of the sort of offset angle that that line segment makes with the positive z axis, we're going to call our angle phi. Okay, so this is kind of a lot to take in, and it's kind of best to just uh, get some practice, I guess, with thinking about different equations. So for this part, one of this talk, we're going to maybe look at some equations in spherical coordinates. But first, we need probably a nice way to relate these spherical coordinates to the ordinary rectangular ones. We'd like that nice uh, coordinate transformation. It says x equals something, y equals something, z equals something, where the somethings have to do with r, theta, and phi. So our convention that we'll pick here is that we'll always let rho be bigger than or equal to zero. We'll think of it as like a non-negative radius. And we'll let theta go between 0 and 2 pi like it always did before. So we can go all the way around in uh, the xy plane. And with these two conventions in place, we only really need phi to go from 0 to pi. Why is that? Well, phi going from 0 to pi can get us, well, from 0 to pi over 2, we get the sort of top half of, uh, of space here. And with theta being allowed to go all the way around, we can even get those octants over there. And for phi varying between pi over 2 and pi, we get all the sort of bottom part of space under the xy plane. And again, the fact that we let theta go between 0 and 2 pi allows us to rotate all the way around. Um, so we don't need the full power of having phi be uh, between 0 and 2 pi as well. It's enough to just have it be between 0 and pi, and that way there's less redundancy in these coordinates. So 
Uh, that's going to be the convention that we take. Now, I will warn you that I don't know if you meet spherical coordinates in another class, if they're going to have the same convention in that other class. It's possible and actually prob probable that they won't. But you just have to keep your eye out and just kind of see what the sort of geometry at play is in the definition that you're handed at any given class that you take. Okay, so let's look at this coordinate transformation. So that line segment L, this one that joins the origin to Q, this projection of P to the XY plane, let's call the length of that R like it was in polar coordinates. Then I think we can do some, uh, then since I guess R and theta then play the exact same role that they did in polar coordinates, we can say that um, x equals to r cosine theta and y equals to r sine theta. Uh, this is nice. Um, we also can look at this triangle here, this right triangle that's given by uh, the line segment L and the line segment M, which forms the hypotenuse, and then this straight line segment joining Q to P. Well, that line segment joining Q to P is parallel to the z-axis. And that line segment M between P and the origin, that is a transversal cutting those parallel lines. And so by the sort of alternate interior angles theorem, I think, we have here parallel lines cut by a transversal. These alternate interior angles each have the angle measure of phi. So now we can do a little bit of right triangle trig on this dashed right triangle here and say that sine of phi is the length of L divided by rho. Well, that is sine of phi is R divided by rho. So then we can uh, solve for R and get that R is rho sine phi. Oh, but now we can go back up here to our polar coordinate expression for X and Y and replace R with rho sine phi. And so it follows that x equals to rho sine of phi cosine of theta and y equals to rho sine of phi sine of theta. So this will be, at least for x and y, this will be our coordinate transformation uh, from right, spherical to rectangular coordinates. And is there anything that we can notice from this one right off the bat? This is an important relationship that I think we exploit pretty often in this class, so we'll probably just go ahead and say it now, that x squared plus y squared is rho squared times sine squared of phi. How does that work? Well, if we square everything here, we get rho squared sine squared phi cosine squared theta. And if we square everything here, we get rho squared sine squared phi sine squared of theta. And we can factor out from the sum of those two, rho squared sine squared phi. And what we're left with when we factor that out is cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta, which of course all of you know is one. So we're left with this x squared plus y squared equals to rho squared sine squared phi. This one is, I swear this one comes up more often than not. And so it's good to have it around but it's sad because it's remarkably similar to another thing that comes up often with, pol or with spherical coordinates that we'll meet probably in a minute. Um, so just kind of be aware of this one. I don't know, get a tattoo of that or, or not. Okay, so let's go back to this right triangle. Um, and let's see, we did sine of phi, right? So what can we say about uh, cosine of phi? Well, cosine of phi should be this length of this line segment, which goes from uh, height z equals zero to height z, right? So this line segment should have length just z, and we'll have cosine of phi then is z divided by rho. So if cosine of phi is z divided by rho, then we can solve for z and we get that z is rho cosine of phi. So we'll put these all together and we get these following three uh, relations. X is rho sine of phi cosine of theta. Y is rho sine of phi sine of theta. And Z is rho cosine of phi. And so let's put all of these together. And notice that X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared is 
given by just squaring all three of these and adding them together, as you can see here. And then we already saw that the first two together will combine to just rho squared sine squared of phi. And then the last one here, z squared, that's rho squared cosine squared of phi. Ah! But then we can factor out rho squared, and we have sine squared of phi plus cosine squared of phi, which you know is 1. And so this whole expression reduces to just rho squared. Now I'll say that, you know, it wasn't really necessary for us to do all of this sort of manipulation here. We can see from the definition of rho that it is the distance of that point P from the origin. But if P has the rectangular coordinates x, y, and z, then its distance from the origin is obviously this uh, sum of, or its squared distance from the origin, sorry, is uh, x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So, um, so right, so that would give us rho squared at the end. Uh, but I did like to put this here anyway, because it seems like we get to do this all the time with spherical coordinates to sort of uh, write some expanded expression out and then factor out enough things and be left with this Pythagorean trig identity being applied repeatedly to make the expression that we have simpler somehow. So that's a common thing that we'll um, experience. And so when we come back in the next video, well, I think we'll take a look at some equations in spherical coordinates. So we'll see you then.